In this video, I'll show you how you can control your e-learning through the timeline. I got a message from Yoon Kim. Uh, Yoon asks, uh, hello Paul, thanks for your tutorials. I was wondering if you can teach me how to prevent skipping slides. Hope trainees can review previous slides, but cannot go to the next page until narration stops. Please let me know as soon as possible. Thank you. So, uh, Yoon, this is definitely something that I can show you about, and I've thought about doing a tutorial that deals with the timeline before. This shouldn't be a very long video either, because it's a pretty simple concept once you get it down. So here's a slide that I'm developing for a course that I'm working on that has to do with um, the prevention of violence in the workplace. And this is just sort of a course objective slide. And I'm going to cover off uh, Yoon's question, but I'm also going to cover off how you can get certain things to happen at certain times as well. One of the very first things that I, I usually create for my slides in Adobe Captivate is some sort of narration, whether it's uh, a temporary text-to-speech track or whether it's an actual recorded voice. Usually I start off with text-to-speech because, of course, things might change. And then, of course, uh, as we get to get ready to release the final version of the e-learning course, then we might go into the recording studio and record something more permanent. But I have a bunch of objects on the screen. Um, you know, a course title, and it's just some key words that are associated with the learning objectives for this course. They've been written very casually. But down in my timeline, you can see that nothing either starts or stops at a particular time. So the easiest way to deal with the whole skipping to the next slide issue is to extend your timeline, as you've seen me just do now, uh, beyond where the audio finishes. Now select your next button and then simply position your cursor over just the beginning of the timeline for that object and then until you get this little icon here which looks like two arrows with a line in the middle and click and then drag that and you may have to adjust the Let's change that to specific time. And let's uncheck the pause for a moment because I know that can be a problem. Let's make sure that it doesn't appear until the narration is finished. And really, that's it. I mean, that's just a, a simple matter of setting up the next button so that it doesn't appear until the user has listened to all the audio. Now, of course, for this to truly be effective, you're going to need to go into your skin editor and make sure that your playback controls are turned off. In this particular course, I'm going to have my own custom playback controls, including back and next buttons like you see on the screen here. But uh, I'm not going to use any of the built-in playback controls within Adobe Captivate. If you turn those off and create your own, you'll have what you need to, to build a truly um, custom solution to this problem. You could even go so far as to even prevent someone from going to the previous slide uh, until that narration is finished, but I think that's optional. I don't, I don't think you should restrict someone from going back if they miss something on the previous slide and they need to review it right away. You can keep that opportunity up and running. Now the other thing I'd like to do, and this doesn't answer Yoon's question, but Obviously, having things appear on screen all at the same time may not be conducive for triggering the learning in your users or your learners, if you will. So as this particular uh, course objective is read out to them, I'd like to have these items appear one by one rather than all at once as they currently appear on this slide. And the easiest way to do that, I find, is I select all the objects that I want to stagger and then play a little bit of the, um, let's just resize my timeline here. We'll play a little bit of the, uh, the text-to-speech at the bottom here. Upon completion of this online course, you will be able to correctly identify the... So there's the first one. The, defini the definition, the definition of definition. workplace... 
So I'm going to drag all of these over so that nothing appears until we start hearing the individual course objectives. Now I'm going to uncheck the first one by holding down my control key and clicking my mouse on the item I want to release and then continue to play. The definition of workplace violence. The impact. Right, and uh, so same thing. I'm going to drag everything else over to where it says impact, and you can hold down the the, the timeline playhead. Active violence, impact of violence in the workplace. To get the exact impact spot. Impact violence in the workplace. That sounds about right here. So let's just drag that back a little bit. And again, I'm going to hold down Control, select impact, so that the the three remaining items are selected. Impact of violence in the workplace. Your rights and responsibilities. So it's pretty obvious where these need to go. You can just see them on the timeline here. But maybe you want the key word to show up at a particular moment. With respect to workplace violence, ADP's responsibility. So again, we'll just uncheck rights and responsibilities. Oh, I've released the other one as well. I'm only dragging the remaining ones just for convenience so that as I get towards the end, everything's been already pulled over to that position anyway. ADP's responsibilities with respect to workplace violence and the steps for reporting. So right there, I wanted to land workplace reporting. violence, reporting workplace, reporting workplace, reporting workplace. There we go. So let's just select the last one and drag it to where the playhead is. Now one thing you can do, and just this is, I don't think it will impact the, the, the course itself, but I like to layer these in an order that makes sense. So I'm just using my alignment toolbar to bring the selected objects forward so that I get a nice pyramid effect. And of course, you could even move that, that next button to the top as well if you felt that was necessary. So let's just do a preview now and see how this looks. Upon completion of this online course, you will be able to correctly identify the definition of workplace violence, the impact of violence in the workplace, your rights and responsibilities with respect to workplace violence, ADP's responsibilities with respect to workplace violence, and the steps for reporting workplace violence. Click the right arrow to learn why this course is important. And then the right arrow appears. In fact, you could go so far as to listen to the narration and see where, in fact, that uh, I need to put the pause back on there. Um, you could even position this back to where she says right arrow. Why this course is important. Right arrow to learn. Right arrow to right arrow to learn. Why right arrow to right there. So let's just try that out and see how that works. And then you could probably drag this. Whoop! I'm going to be careful here. Let's drag this back and then adjust this to that spot there and then turn the pause back on. That should work perfectly. Let's try that now. Upon completion of this online course, you will be able to correctly identify the definition of workplace violence the impact of violence in the workplace, your rights and responsibilities with respect to workplace violence, ADP's responsibilities with respect to workplace violence, and the steps for reporting workplace violence. Click the right arrow to learn why this course is important. So there you go. That, that certainly gives you, a, I think, a nicer looking slide because, of course, the items that you're speaking to only appear on screen once they're mentioned in the narration. But more importantly, to address Yoon Kim's question, uh, the right arrow doesn't appear until the opportunity to move forward is made available to the users. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.